We improve lives through innovation. So when my son asks me, hey dad, what is it that you do? And I always say to him, okay, I'm in the people and technology business. So what I do is about improving lives. But I'm also in IoT. And IoT is about connecting stuff. Connecting devices, systems, people, whatever, aggregating data, sending out data, creating value of data. It's about connecting and create value. And that can be business value, and it can be value for people that can be a lot of things. So he's like, okay, Dad, so when you speak about connecting stuff, is that like what I do with my friends at home when we connect our iPhones and we can track each other's movements? Yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of like it. And is it like that coffee machine you have in your kitchen yeah, and the app that you have on your phone that when you run out, run out of coffee, it automatically connects to the internet and orders the new coffee so you never run out of it? That's exactly what it is. And is it like the app on your iPhone with which you can control the lightning and that when you are a on a business trip, you can see if mom's alone in the house. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So it's picking up quite, quite good. But then he says, okay, but everybody's already doing that, right? Well, son, of course, everybody's already doing that. Right? And that's what he expects. He's in a generation where they expect that everyone's already doing that. Have you ever seen for the people with kids, a two-year-old walking up to the television and trying to swipe to a different channel. And you're like, you idiot. <laughs> That's not possible. But it's what they expect. It's like you put a plate on the table with, with vegetables and they just swipe it off and they expect there to be french fries and with mayonnaise. Not gonna happen. But it's what they expect. So not to disappoint them too much, I say, okay, my little friend. Of course they do it. Everyone does it. They have these cool offices with KPI dash. They can see everything. Everything's interconnected. So yes, they're all on top of their business. Well, actually, it's kind of more like this. And I'm still a bit lying because I sometimes encounter stuff like this as well. And that's a lot of data. Yeah? So if, you're, if you are a kid, you would swipe all this away, but it's not going to happen. This is an interesting one. Who knows what it is, what this is? I know some people here in the audience already know, so I'm going to tell you. This is Stockholm in Sweden. And this is H-Day. And it's called H-Day because the word in Swedish is impossible to pronounce, even for the Swedish themselves. Yeah? <laughs> it's impossible. But what hap what's happening here? The Swedish government decided from one day to the other, let's drive on the right side of the road instead of the left, like everyone else is doing in Europe, except for England, but that's not Europe anymore, I think. But what went typically well was that uh, on, the, on the country roads, the, the transition went really smooth because there we have these long stretched roads. But in the city center, you can imagine, there's a bit more distraction. Hey, you've got people, you've got roundabouts, you've got traffic lights, you've got shops. So there's so much influence surrounding the operator sitting in the car, and that has an impact. So imagine, and we've talked about this a couple of times already this morning, an autonomous ship entering the harbor of Rotterdam, and nobody is aware of what's going to happen. So the ship comes in, starts docking, starts unloading, but the surroundings are not informed. And that's why the Rotterdam Harbor is building this IoT platform. Yes, there will be an autonomous ship. And yes, that ship will enter the harbor on its own. But what's even more important, that you create a platform for the surrounding companies, the environment on which they can connect to, yeah, to connect organizational silos and grow exponentially in future. And that will take time. That's an iterative process. Process. So Rotterdam Harbor, unique. Yeah, it's a great project, but we have doing these projects for the past 25 years. Yeah, for the Ministry of Infra and Water Management, we have a nationwide water management system. 
So we're already doing it. And this one is also up for expansion, of course, eh, because you can do a lot more cool stuff with data. What we tend to do in, when we are in IoT, speak about servitization, but this is nothing new. Eh, we have been doing this for decades. Eh, we have servers, the market is changing, there's competition, we try to adapt, and then we start improving stuff. This is nothing new. The only thing what's new is that technology is accelerating opportunities to move faster and even become more competitive. So, again, and most, some of you probably have seen this slide, but it's not Netflix, Airbnb, Uber, Blockbuster, or whatever that killed the business of their competitors, it's crappy servers. It really is about crappy servers. And if you're a technology enthusiast and you have a great idea, and you launched it, and you boost it worldwide, this is what's happening. It's all on behalf of the people. If you look at organizations, we see different maturities. Yeah, so it's very difficult for organizations to adapt to change. And when you are an organization which, who's kind of unaware of what's happening in the world, you have a challenge. So that varies as well. And then you have the different business impacts that may vary year on year on year. So you really have to understand what you as a company are doing. And it also goes from a technology perspective as well. Some companies are now just looking into the possibilities of what technology can bring to their organization. So if you're a technology provider, this is interesting because when you're dealing with a co company who's kind of unaware, it's a long sustainable business model. Hey, you can earn a lot of money. And is that a bad thing? No, because for example, when that, when that company is in, in investing, for example, in predictive maintenance technology, what we see in practice is that, that, that companies that do so have become best cost producers because they're on top of their business. So they perform better and earn more money. So that's a good thing. But it's still difficult to make a clear business case, of course. Yeah, we're all doing something with IoT, but the whole business case thing kind of needs to land. And that has everything to do with your organizational maturity. Yeah? Understanding the business impact, creating an ROI, and so on. But what we do see is that in production, for example, AI and data science are really picking up. And there are a lot of proof of concepts actually being conducted as we speak. And what we also see, and I've heard it already this morning as well, is that predictive, in predictive maintenance, IT and artificial intelligence play a more dominant role. And that's what's happening. Yeah, so we see it evolve, and we see companies getting better and doing this kind of stuff. And then there's the question, OK, what are we going to do? Are we, we are going to invest in IT. Let's do it ourselves. We have a great idea. Or develop together, or buy something which is already available. Hey, you can do that. What we see in practice is that a lot of companies that say, OK, let's do something in IT, build a platform or whatever, and do it themselves, come back, because it's kind of difficult. Because it's not only technological, it's also organizational as well. Developed, and you look at the current state of the market, what we encounter is that more and more companies actually want to develop together with an ecosystem of partners to help them embrace and evolve an IoT solution. How does that look like in practice? This is a chicken. And if, so if you're not a vegetarian, you really like these kind of, kind of animals, when they look like this, of course. And um, for them to become like this, you need to put them in an oven. And what's interesting, Friado is a supplier of rotisserie ovens, and they do that worldwide. And think big, like 100,000 of these machines in the US, in Australia, everywhere. And the customers demand, for example, higher reliability, higher productivity. Eh? So they want to guarantee their customers that their chickens look so delicious as of the previous picture. So they demand more service from that machine supplier, helping them become reliable, profitable, and have a machine that's constantly working and being updated. 
So they build an IoT platform, fit the machine with sensors, and have worldwide interconnectivity on behalf of making the business for their customers better. We can also connect cows. Pretty interesting. Culip is a company that does dairy audits on dairy farmers. And you can imagine that all those farmers in the Netherlands work and live in different regions with different influences. So to become, to have a more clean model of auditing, they're aggregating data out of these different environments to have a more uniform rating. They're even looking at fitting their milk samples with temperature sensors to actually measure that when the sensor of uh, when the when the when the when the flu when the milk is be, being 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 tested that the temperature is right. So as a service to their customer, they're improving reliability. And that's an interesting aspect. So when we speak about the IoT, we speak about technology, but we again speak about the human, systematic and organizational aspects. So with technology, you can actually improve everything. You can make everything. And if you ask me now, how many jobs will be obsolete in the next decades? Yeah, maybe all of them. Yeah, but you can do everything with technology, and we are going to do different stuff with our lives. So no worries. But technology should, should have a mission. It should help an organization become better. So if you know that, you can start looking at the technical details. And that this is a success formula we can actually prove. Sugar Union is a sugar factory in the Netherlands. And for like six years ago, they've implemented the road to zero surprises. It's their strategy to become the nicest and smartest sugar factory in the whole world or in Europe, in Euro, it's in Europe. But this is a process that has been going on for the past six years. So they took a dive in their organization. Are we ready for this? And what do we want? And we want an environment with zero surprises. It's a campaign company, so the maintainer is also the operator. And in that, in that process over the past years, they have created this smart factory open community. So there, there are a lot of specialized companies in that community to which they speak, but they also speak together. So when your logo is on here, thank me later. But it's, it's, a, smart open, it's a smart open community. And, and as they say it, it's about IDs having sex. Yeah, so it's like, okay, there's some noise in the engineering room. What's that? Yeah, that's the IDs going at it again. That's not it. But it's about IDs having sex. So if companies start talking with each other, from a business perspective of their company, good IDs will arise from that. And again, already six years in the making. And we are proud as Axians also to deliver one piece of that project. And this is actually data science and sugar beets. So they have this sugar beet cutting mills that are really important for their production process because the knives of these cutting mills they wear. And they want to predict when to actually change their knives, or they want to predict what the best time is for them to change their knives, because the impact on production is so high that it's interesting to do it with machine learning and AI. It's based also on their predictive philosophy. They're not only doing that on the cutting knives, they're also doing some predictive maintenance on the, cutting, on the rotating parts of the cutting mill. So what they do, they bring maintenance and operational data together, put some smart stuff on top of that, and create a predictive environment so they can earn more money. And what they see now is that in every campaign, they earn more money. So they have a yield improvement. And if you do that right, and you've got all that data, for example, for maintenance, you can start adding, for example, augmented reality. Yeah? So, hey, if you have a problem with a machine, you just stand in front of it, push on a button, see actually the data coming into your glasses or whatever, and then solve the problem before the machine starts failing. Pretty cool. Science fiction? No, doing this already. 
doing this already. But to be successful in this stuff, you need to make sure that you look at this from a people perspective, from a systematical perspective, and an organizational perspective. Because if you don't do that, it's just technology. It should benefit the people in the end. A typical customer, of course, having a site with sensors, PLCs, instruments, can be anything, can be everything. And you need to get that data to the right place. And in order to get the data to the right place, you need to invest in technology. In invest in gateway, devices, in communication. Yeah, bring that data or that information to a cloud or the edge or anywhere. And make sure you bring that to I IoT operations to do the smart things with it and then connect it to the business applications. And wouldn't it be a great idea? Yeah, and, and that's what we see a lot when we speak about, for example, interconnectivity. There are so many protocols at a customer site. How do you even connect them all up? How do you connect them up? So wouldn't it be great just to have a box where you can plug in all these protocols just to make sure that you get all the data and bring that up to your business systems and do all the smart stuff with it to make the lives of people better? And that's what IoT is about. And you can imagine, this is so big. You cannot do this alone. We as Axions cannot do this alone. And we have a pretty good idea how an IoT project should evolve, but we absolutely cannot do this alone. We're a technology company. When we look at our, our company, we're part of, 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 of Finchie Energies. We have a network of, of companies. And all these companies are, have their own expertise and their own knowledge. Um, what's, what's really interesting about this, it's actually an ecosystem of expertise. So when we speak to a customer, we have the luxury to have a lot of experience within our, our organization that we can use to make the lives of people better in specific vertical markets, because all these Finchy brands have actually made sure that they specialize on specific market segments, and that's what we do as well. And that's what you really need to understand. Eh? You cannot just go to a customer and say, okay, let's, help, let's do IoT, and we are going to help you embed this, eh, embed the technology, and make sure that it's embodied by people. It's not going to happen. Hey, you have to understand the market and what what they need it for and what you are doing it for. So a knowledge network, again, very, very important. And we also have the luxury to have a great partner ecosystem in the likes of Tele2, for example. So the message here is, from a technology perspective, from our perspective, everything is possible. You can make it. The most important thing is that when you want to be successful in IoT, you have to look at it from a human, systematic, and organizational perspective. If you don't do that, and you only look at technology, you're not going to be successful in IoT. Thank you. Thank you.